The Kroger company, ticker symbol KR, was incorporated on April 3rd, 1902. It manufactures and processes food for sale in supermarkets. The company operates supermarkets, multi-department stores, jewellery stores and convenience stores throughout the United States. If you have a look at the last 12 months, the stock price has been very volatile, jumping between its low of $41.82 to a high of $50.41. If we zoom out and look over five years, the graph was trending upwards even through the pandemic. The continued hikes in interest rates has affected it. Let's have a look at the dividend history. The yield is currently 2.53%. Looking at historical data, they paid dividends for a short period in the 80s from June 1986 to October 98, then restarted in June 2006, paying just over 3 cents and have paid quarterly ever since with continued year-on-year -year increases all the way up to present day at 29 cents a share. No cuts in that time period either, which is good to see. Let's have a quick look at how it's performed against the S&P. If you'd invested $10,000 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you would have a total return of 176.59%, ending with a value investment of $27,661.04. Although not beating the S&P, it has performed very well. The S&P gave a return of $31,787.06. If we go back 20 years, it's even better. Kroger actually beat the S&P with a total return of 562.96%, giving you a solid $66,251.22. The S&P giving you 63531 so very good overall. Let's have a look at the financials. Kroger's market cap is currently $32.92 billion. It has a very low price to sales, which is good. The payout ratio is 47.77%, which is good to see, as this means the dividend is safe. Revenue continues to grow. Kroger have an outstanding history of growing revenue. EBITDA is solid. Free cash flow has seen a big drop off back to 2019 levels. Net income and EPS is good. Cash to debt, a bit on the high side, and it has stayed at this level for the last four years. Debt only becomes a real problem when a company can't easily pay it off, either by raising capital or with its own cash flow. If things get really bad, the lenders can take control of the business. However, a more common but still painful scenario is that it has to raise new equity capital at a low price, thus permanently diluting shareholders. If we look at the shares outstanding, it has increased for the first time since 2001. This was by 51 million shares, taking it to 805 million. This is something to monitor. Apart from this year, there has been continued share buybacks from 1.7 billion shares in 2000 to 805 million today, which is really impressive. Some catalysts that are good for the stock. Kroger has reached a settlement with its opioid lawsuit for 1.4 billion, plus the merger with Albertsons is getting closer. Let's see what the analysts are forecasting. CNN Business have an average 12-month price target of $52. That's 13.5% upside based on 17 analysts. Tip ranks have an average price target of $52, 13.56% based on 12. And Zacks have an average buy price of $52.36, 14.35% upside based on 14. The price targets are almost exactly the same across CNN Business, Tip Ranks and Zacks. An average price between the three is $52.12. Let's have a look at value investing. If we see what the discounted cash flow has, a fair price of $58.46, which is 28% upside. And the dividend discount model is $36.46, which actually 20.2% downside. If we take an average of analyst expectations and the investing models, that would give us $49.01. With a 10% margin of safety, that would give us $44.10, which is still higher than its 52-week low and not far off its current price. So this can be seen as a good buying opportunity at these levels in fair price territory. As usual, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.